Hey guys, Clumsy here, and welcome to a brand new series in the channel called A Clumsy Pilot's Life. <laughs> As the name implies, we are making use of this amazing app right here called The Pilot's Life by Simbit World, where we are starting off as a junior first officer. And uh, I've done some flights already, but we are on our way, halfway there, towards becoming a first officer. And then hopefully, eventually, we become a captain. But because of that, we are going to be staying in the right seat of the flight deck for the foreseeable future. And we will be learning and getting actual experience at the same time. Right? So we are currently employed by Air Philippines. I think in reality that uh, airline is no longer existing. That has been bought by PAL, by Philippine Airlines, thus delivery. But anyway, so we are flying today with the A319 from uh, Puerto Princesa in Palawan to Manila, the capital of the Philippines, to Naia International Airport. So let's turn that off and let's get right to setting this thing up. Now, I've already done most of the initial uh, startup procedures and I'll try to make it as casual as possible. So that even if you're not familiar with the airline uh, and the aviation uh, terms, you can still ride along and enjoy the flight with us. Now before we get started, we'll have to request for clearance from air traffic control. And in order to do that, I am using the Pilot to ATC plugin, this offline plugin that allows us to speak with someone offline. So let's go and get our clearance before we do anything else. Clumsy168, ready to copy IFR clearance. Clumsy168 is cleared to Romeo Papalima Lima. Fly the Nomi 1W departure with the Nomio transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 27. Climb to flight level 160 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 10 minutes after departure. Squawk 5054. 160. Let's let our co pilot do the read back. Clumsy 168 is cleared to Romeo Papa Lima Lima. Fly the NOMY 1W departure with the NOMIO transition, then as filed, climb to flight level 160 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 10 minutes after departure. Squawk 5054. Clumsy 168 read back correct. QNH is 1012. Let us know when you're ready for pushback. QNH is 1012. Clumsy 168. Looking good. We have 1012. We have flight level 160. Looking good. In terms of the departure for today, we are departing via runway 27. And it's a pretty straightforward departure. No mu 1 whiskey here you'll just basically be following these waypoints so after we depart from runway 27 we reach the victor papa 602 waypoint we turn left from there and follow victor papa 414 galio and syra above flight level 80 i think that should actually be 8000 feet instead of flight level 80 because we have a transition altitude of 11,000. But anyway, you get the point. Let's leave that there. Alright. Let's go and start up the APU. That is already set up. So, master switch on and start it up. From there, we will be able to see the APU starting up right here. We should be hearing it as well outside if we go and take a peek. Are we hearing anything? Not at the moment. There we go. Flap is open. APU should be starting. APU means auxiliary power unit. This is like a mini engine that serves as a means of providing electricity to the plane. You can hear it's pulling up right there. Even though the main two engines aren't working yet, there is like a third engine, that's why it's called auxiliary, that 
cannot really not really the best way of moving the plane but should be enough to give electricity before you actually get the engine started so that will be the intermediary power supply that we have it says APU is available that means it should be safe to remove the ground power unit the external power the lights will flicker for a bit but nothing should get lost everything that we input should still be there that's good and if you look at electricity it is now using oh yeah, I forgot to show this to you what did I say select uh, it's now selecting from the APU generator this is why I love this uh, Airbus model it's so visual gives you really a very good idea of what's happening in the plane and tells you what's happening behind the scenes so I'll try to explain that to you as much as I can okay that looks good there we are in the APU now so APU bus is set let's turn on the bleed APU bleed is somewhere here looking gone looking good generators are still have that fault sign but that's fine those will disappear when we start the engines everything else is not lit up no yellow lights anywhere that's good all right let's go ahead and request push back and engine start tower clumsy 168 ready for push back and engine start Clumsy 168 push back and engine start approved. Push back and engine start approved. Clumsy 168. So the tug is actually outside already. If you look at the exterior, that guy has been waiting for us for a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and release the parking brake. Here comes the pushback. Light him up. There we go. And this plane is actually a much more automated version. The A319, the A320 is a much more automated version compared to the 737 that we flew last time. Don't have to turn off the air conditioning manually when you hit this ignition key. You can hear the air conditioning turn off automatically. Then we start engine 2. You don't need to introduce fuel or anything like that everything is done automatically on its own you can see the N2 climbing EGT starting to climb N1 showing a sliver of increase there and you can slowly hear the engines pulling up there it is lovely by the way, I've also switched to 60 frames per second, so we get a smoother flight experience. Let's see if I can maintain that FPS all throughout. 290 at 4 knots. Now, I'm not sure if I pushed back on the right angle here. We'll see. Okay, good. Engine 2 is good. Engine 1, start. We'll hear that dog barking, as some people call it. Because that's where the hydraulics is being fed from the... They call something that. It's a bit technical for me. The PTU transferring from the second to the first. That's the, the dog barking, I think, that we hear. Set the parking brake. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Looking good, yeah. It looks like we are good here. Although the windsock doesn't seem to agree with the... No, it's fine, yeah. Facing that way. That's where we're going. That's runway 27. So we'll be backtracking the runway a bit. There you go. You see the electricity flickering again and if you look through here you'll see that even though you have the APU set up the arrow is showing that the engine generators are the one providing the electricity beautiful and if you look above 
no more fault signs anywhere right so now we can turn off the APU bleed and the APU master switch so the APU's and job disconnected. Sick one pin on the right. Take it easy and have a safe flight. I hope I did not forget anything. <laughs> okay, let's go and uh, talk to Tower again. Tower, clumsy 168, ready to taxi. Clumsy 168, taxi to runway 27, hold short runway 27. Taxi to runway 27, hold short runway 27, clumsy 168. Where's the guy? There it is. Showing us the bypass pin. That means we have full control of our plane again. Let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think I can actually set it up. Flight controls right here. And if I focus a bit on that, so you can see those moving and see the flight controls moving as I'm moving my stick here. So everything is working fine. The rudder, full left, center, full right, working good. The trims are working as well, you can see that moving right there. The numbers and also the physical uh, trims. Now for takeoff, it says up 0.5, that was the calculation done. So let's go and set that 0.5, there you go. That should be okay. And we need flaps 1. So we set flaps through here. There you go. And you can see that extending there. The slats in front and the flaps at the back. I see S for slats, F for flaps. You can see those extending right there. Can we? That's the one. Let's go and see if that does indeed move. Yeah. So if I retract them and I extend them back again, everything is working fine. Good. And what's amazing here in this plane, you have all of these checklists to make sure that you haven't missed anything. Maybe I shouldn't have asked for clearance yet huh, for taxi because we are not yet ready. But that's fine. Max auto brakes, that's for rejected takeoff. If we ever need to stop because uh, if we ever need to uh, stop the takeoff procedure for any emergency, that's what the auto brake is for. The max auto brakes cabin is checked, so we signal the cabin crew through there that we are ready to move and they should be ready. Spoilers are armed. The white uh, thing is there. That signifies it's armed and take off config. Test that. Everything looks good. All right, off we go. Let's go and release the parking brake. Spool the throttles just a bit. Off we go. Feels super strange flying with a stick instead of a yoke. With the 737, I set up the yoke. But here, the stick is more appropriate. But yeah, feels so strange, but quite good as well. I think it's just a matter of getting used to. Right. Tower, clumsy 168, holding short, runway 27. Not sure they understood us there. No, I think very good. It's just loading up. While they're loading and thinking what to say to us, let's go ahead and turn on our landing lights. Strobes are on auto. Beacons should have been on before we pushed back. That's fine. Don't need those lights. Nav lights? Yeah, we do need that one. Uh huh. And those look good. The transponder should be TARA. Man, that's taking a long time for the clearance. I hope the. Clumsy 168 winds are light and variable cleared for takeoff. Runway 27. 
cleared for takeoff, runway 27, clumsy 168. Alright, off we go. Start the timer right here. Later, right before we take off, we'll be starting the chrono timer as well. Now this plane feels so much lighter than the 737. It actually feels like an oversized GA plane, this one. And I'm not sure if that's really how it feels in real life. Maybe it's the Airbus design because you're flying by wire. Where all the controls are linked by actual computer mechanisms. You're not mechanically moving the flight controls. You are more like moving it electronically. And the sensation, the feedback is just simulated. So maybe that's why. But yeah, it really feels so light compared to a 737. But I'm super excited to try out how the A321 feels. I'm hoping that it is much more mm, heavy, much more, much heavier to maneuver. That would give it a more proper airliner feel. What is the speed limit when you are on the runway? I think we can speed up a bit more. Oh, there is a small, I would call it a U-turn slot up ahead. That would be perfect for what we need to do. You can see the line right there. How are we looking like here? Not too shabby. Slow down. There it is. Let's do it slowly. Bit by bit. Runway is clear. Looking good. I think we should be slowing down here. Yeah, this plane is super light, even if you're at idle, it uh, continues to move forward. You really need to watch the brakes. There we are. Looking good. Alright. Are we in the center? Center enough. Yeah, I would call that center enough. Good. So let's start the chrono timer here. And spool to 50%. Push on the stick a bit. Stable. Go to man flex. There we go, man flex. Don't go, don't overdo it. Eighty knots, check. Push back on the yoke, on the stick rather. And observe the speeds. V1, rotate. And we have lift off. Positive rate, gear up. Looking good. And let me follow the flight directors here. Gears are up. Full concentration mode. Over climb. Looking good, alright. And now I can let go of the throttle. The Airbus is very simplistic in that design. You barely touch the throttle at all. And it has a very different design philosophy with Boeing. Like you don't actually see the throttle moving, it's just fixed there. But the thrust is varying in degrees and everything. 
So very different design philosophy, but both of them are working one, two, one, six, pretty eight, great. Manila Center on one two eight point three. Good day. Center on one two eight point three. Good day, Clumsy one six eight. Okay. Now the problem is. Okay, flaps up. It's a bit late. It's fine. How can I fly at the same time as switching that frequency? This is why you have two people piloting the plane. But thank goodness we have autopilot to help us a bit. So let me turn that on. There you go. While I go ahead and switch to the right frequency. 128.3. We'll get there eventually. There we go. Back here. We're still good. Yes, we're still good. We're doing that uh, U-turn bit right there. Okay, I see. Yes. Exactly as we planned it out. Center, Clumsy 168. Climbing to flight level 160. Clumsy 168, good morning. Radar contact. Okay, good. We still have the ignition from the engine. That's not something we want. I always forget that. Ground spoilers are still armed. We can disarm that now. Track that fully. Seat belts can go off. This window right here, the ECAM, is so useful for letting you know what is happening in the plane. If you forgot a setting, if you forgot to turn off, turn on something, you see everything in a glance. And that's just so useful. That is looking good. 10,000 feet. Let's turn off the landing lights. Looking good there. So you can see nothing is showing anymore on the ECAM, which uh, means we are doing the right things, mostly. Now we can go and check. Cabin altitude is climbing. Uh, and if we go and check it out here, the pressure. Cabin altitude, that's the pressure outside versus inside the plane. That should also be climbing. This is how fast the cabin altitude is climbing itself. It's fine. Fuel levels. So many things to see. Our, our wheels. Their temperature. Their pressure. Super cool, right? status if anything is wrong we're all good we are all good there just noticed we have uh, crossed 11,000 feet which means we move to standard QNH and then you can see that blue blue green line there that's the point where we reach flight level 160 the altitude that we set This one I can't remember. I think that is the speed limit change. Let's see. Um, let's go and turn on our constraints here. 250 knots. So I think we can start uh, accelerating after that point, after Tajin. Exactly. Clumsy 168 climb and maintain flight level 250. Climb and maintain flight level 250, clumsy 168. Nice. So you can see the blue line disappeared because it's way back there now. You can zoom this in, zoom this out. You should see that somewhere. There it is. Now it's way farther there, 25 miles away more or less. Good. Now, TCAS, we can turn that on. Set that above so we see 
all the nearby planes that are in our vicinity looks like there is nothing interesting okay that's fine we can do some sightseeing in the meantime look at how beautiful this is i was actually planning on enabling x enviro but it was absolutely hammering my frame rate there was no chance that i could get that so unfortunately not going to be a possibility yet until x enviro a new version is released Let's go and have a look outside. Nice. Small and compact. A very short, very small plane. I'm not sure if this is the shortest Airbus. Or is, I think there's an A318. Don't quote me on that, but... <clears throat> Loving this one definitely, but I am really looking forward to the A321. I would like a bigger airliner feel. And that is something that Philippine Airlines really carries in real life, so it would be pretty accurate by then. That's cool. Right, I think we are good here. It's too bad that the tablet cannot go on this side, so I have to reach over there every single time. There we are. Did I actually brief the wrong departure to you guys? We d I did, huh? My bad. We should be going through here. Balbi and the boy. <laughs> See? Clumsy pilot's life. Perfect. <laughs> I hope you guys didn't notice. There we go. Close enough, I would say. Let's go and uh, check out the arrival. We should be joining the Bukal 1 arrival and the ILS 24 approach. The airport should be that one. What's happening to the plane now? Turning right to Nonya. Looking good. Let's switch that to airport. keep that close so we are aware of any incoming planes okay that's the airport we're going to Naya International Airport this is the approach that we're doing that's the airport right there so we will be the arrival will be coming from Bukal so we'll be coming from the southwest straight through there we'll be flying over the airport itself Mia Manila International Airport you are and from there from that point we'll be turning around here to approach from 241 that should be a good enough plan We'll see how well we can execute it though. <laughs> we will see. Now what's amazing... Climb and maintain flight level 330. Good. Now what's amazing as well, with this Airbus, everything is so automated, even the VORs being set up. They are automatically tuned. <clears throat> the ILS approach is automatically tuned. So not like in the 737 where you have to remember the, the panel here in the previous video where you have to set the VOR or the ILS frequencies. Here, everything is automated depending on the flight plan you set up. So if we go through here, the red nav, you see the VOR frequencies here. These are changing depending on where we are already. So right now, this is tuned to 110.10. That later on, that will change to 109. Point, uh, no, that might actually be already the one in runway 24. Let's have a look. Runway 24 is this guy. 
it should be 109.9 the frequency this one yes India mic alpha even the course 241 so in the 737 there are a lot of tweaks that you have to change to be properly set up here everything is automatic just have to monitor them that they are indeed working and that you don't need to manually override them that's cool all right but i think more or less it's going to be straightforward so i'm going to leave you guys here i'll get back to you later before we go on our descent okay so let's do a little flyby and then i'll catch you guys in a bit beautiful and smooth see you guys later Welcome back. Peacefully cruising at 37,000 feet. Flight level 370. But we are almost on our way. Starting our descent in Let's have a look. Top of descent says here is in 31 miles. And I also got this notice enter destination data. Yes, thank you for the reminder. So let's go to perf, go to next phase where we'll have to fill out a couple of different stuff like the QNH at the destination in the EA International Airport is QNH 1015. Temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. Winds are zero at two knots. And the decision height for the ILS. It says here, decision, decision altitude is 375, decision height, that the one with the age is 300. So that's what we will be putting in there. And that should be fully set up in terms of the destination data. Now, what I'm not familiar with, when do you choose flaps 3 or flaps full? Because you can alternate that one between those two and you approach it faster on a flaps 3 configuration. If it's anything like the 737, well, it might not be. Flaps 30 is the normal for 737, flaps 40 for shorter runways. But here, I think full is the default setting. So if you guys have more info on that, let me know, okay? Top of descent in 20 Clumsy months. 168 descent to cross buccal at flight level 205 and descent via the buck 1 arrival with the buccal transition to 4000 feet QNH is 1015 at Ninoy Aquino International. That's a lot of stuff. Let's have our co-pilot read that back. We'll cross buccal at flight level 205 and descend via the buck 1 arrival with the buccal transition to 4000 feet QNH is 1015 Clumsy 168. So they want us to cross Bukal at flight level 205. I hope that's nothing. Is that how you do it? I think so. That's set up there. And then what we'll need to do is we push this on the one with one dot. Like so. So that is the managed descent. So the plane will descend based on its planned path right here and including our altitude restriction of 205 at Pokal. QNH is 1015. Can I set that up even before I switch to standard or to non-standard QNH? No, I don't think so. Okay. Can I do it like this, 1015, bring it back to standard, so that when I bring it back later, I, that's going to be the setting already. Maybe that's how they do it in the Airbus. Alright, so now we have started our descent, but very slow, only 1000 feet per minute, because we have not yet reached the actual point where it was planning to start the descent. So it's slowing it down. And when it does reach that top of descent point, that's when it will step up. That's when it will increase the 
descent rate, so to speak. Let's go to the previous phase here. Descent. Let's go to progress. Vertical deviation. That does the one. What's also cool here, I'm not sure how to use this update at, so if you guys have more info, let me know. But you can put any waypoint here. For example, we want to know how far we are from the airport. So we place that here. And you have exactly the bearing on where that waypoint is and how far you are away from it. So that's a good indication to know how far you are from the airport or from any particular um, uh, VOR or waypoint. Let's say, for example, in Dan. If you put in, in Dan here, in Dan, we are 93 nautical miles away from there. But I, I like that information of knowing how far we are away from the airport. That's like having the equivalent of a fix in the 737, I guess. You know, those circular rings in the map. And look at that. Now we have stepped up our descent. 2,800, 3,000 feet. Almost. And there's the vertical deviation. That circle magenta. Vertical deviation is negative 60 feet. So we are almost bang on the vertical profile. Perfect. Do we need spoilers? Speed brakes? I don't think so. Looks like we are in the range of uh, airspeed that it, it is, has been planning. Now, I cannot remember these. I'll have to review on that, what these two arrows mean. Let me see. If we go to constraints, we should see... 20,500 feet on Bukal. That's what we set up. Flight level 205. And then... 6,000 above on Balai. Let's just leave it. We'll see what it does. <coughs> well, the, the blue line means top of descent. So I guess we reach 205 at that point And then we immediately descend again. So there is maybe a very small window where we keep level. Maybe. Man, imagine if we had proper X and Viral clouds here. What I'm using right now, I think, is a combination of default clouds and puffy clouds. But I'm not sure I like the effect. It's not the perfect balance. There are some clouds which look really good. There are some which look a bit repetitive. It's a bit not yet very uh, uh, sold on it. So here in, the, here in the throttle, I think I haven't shown you yet. It's where you have the detents. So this is zero. That's the when you are taking off, you either go on the toga detent or the fl the man flex here. So usually when you have a flex temp, when you derate the engine, when you don't go full power basically because you have a long runway and the calculation said okay you don't need full power you only need like 90 percent or something so that's where you would put it on the flex temp there the, the, the flex detent and after you've taken off after a while it will ask you to push that back to uh, liver climb here the detent that's why we're here right now and that stays there all throughout right before you touch down so that's easy peasy, simple. Like, you don't even need the throttle for this. You just go to each of the detents because it's that automated. <laughs> Super high tech. How are we doing? Descent rate. Now we're doing good. You see, the VOR have also been uh, tuned automatically. It's now tuned to the Manila International Airport it says we are 86 miles away VME 86 consistent with what we see here and if you look here yeah that's quite consistent with the distance of the airport because that VOR that that uh, MIA VOR is actually 
the airport itself so that is consistent with the AME and the distance all that stuff good cabin altitude is decreasing as we are descending Let's go through here quickly it's just to see that there are no orange or red items and don't ask me about all this stuff I'm the last person to ask <laughs> but they do look cool I have maybe an inkling of what they mean but the short of it is as long as no orange text everything green everything good Oxygen, 1,200 PSI. Looking good there. Yes? No warnings. Perfect. Okay. How are we doing? Still no traffic here. Not a very famous uh, airspace. Ooh, beautiful. I think this is starting to the region where we ha I have portal photos in. Let's have a look. There are some. Those are on the ground. That might be on the airport itself. Yeah, that's 75 miles away. Where the airport is 75 miles away. So exactly, those planes are actually the ones sitting on the airport. Those ones though, those are airborne. You can check that here. So unfortunately, it looks like no plane spotting at the moment. The closest one we have is... Let's look around. 56 miles away. No chance of seeing that from here. But it's good to know that we're not alone at least. I'll take that. Nice, right? Let's do one more of those fancy flybys. Not too shabby. What this view? Linear view. Oh, this one follow, follows you. Can you zoom in from here? Kinda can. Take that. Bit of clouds there. <laughs> Pasted on. If you guys are familiar with ortho photos, that's the number one problem with them because they are satellite images that are put on the scenery. Sometimes the satellite image contains clouds. So when you put that on the mountains, on the landscape, the clouds also stick to the landscape. That's why it's so hard sometimes to find decent ortho photos. But you can just imagine it as being like snow cap or something. <laughs> So it kind of works in the end. Okay, let's see what this does. Yeah, let's go and zoom in here. Yeah, you see the difference? So we descend to flight level 205 and it looks like we stay level for, I don't know, two or three miles or so and then we start our descent again. So it's not the most fluid descent because we overrode what it was planning for us. So at Pokal, we should see the vertical deviation. Well, look at that. Yes, there we are. We stop our descent. And now we continue descent again. Which does not make sense at all, but fine. There it is again. <laughs> so at least we understand what's happening, right? Good. That is the airport in there already. So we'll be flying over the airport, which is nice because we will have a chance to take some nice photos. And it'll give us a chance to do some more plane spotting. Yeah, still no planes nearby. Don't think anyone uses this uh, these airways on a normal basis. We are actually on the arrival already, the Bukal 1 arrival. Let's go and double check the charts here. Let's see if I can find the right one. Yeah, also I'm not sure why, but it says here descent to 6,000, descent to 5,000, 6,5, 4,000. But 
it's not consistent with the the flight plan what's recorded here here there are not much constraints if you look at Balai the altitude constraint here is 6,000 above if you compare that with the one here Balai says 6,000 so it didn't say 6,000 or above so I'm not sure which is the correct one but I'm going to follow the FM, FMS the FMC the MACDU MCDU so many different terms Airbus versus Boeing I'm going to follow that because it's going to take us faster get us faster to where we want to go okay radio 205 that looks good there so we go this arrival ends right on top of the airport and from there we follow the approach 24 here where we turn to 80 degrees at 90 me from the VOR we turn left onto the glide path where we will the glide slope where we will be facing 241 degrees it's going to be the track we're taking and we will be descending from there from 2500 feet on the 3 degree angle to the runway runway 24 yeah. in case we do a missed approach in case we go around we have to climb to 4000 feet 4000 feet and let's read the missed approach procedure track 241 on climb to 4000 feet and once we reach 4000 feet we turn left for holding at uh, MIA VOR so we turn around go back to MIA and then we have a holding pattern in there until cleared or given further instructions by air traffic is 1015 cleared for the ILS approach to runway 24 with the missing in action transition at Ninoy Aquino international contact approach on 119.7 good morning we call the MIA transition missing, missing, missing in action QNH is 1015 cleared for the ILS approach to runway 24 with the missing in action transition approach on 119.7 clumsy 16A. 119.7. Let's uh, keep that. 119.7. Uh, oh, this is going to be a long wind. I'm using my mouse wheel for this. This one we move to 118.4, I think is the next frequency, the tower frequency, if I remember correctly. Right. Approach clumsy 168, descending 4000 feet. Clumsy 168, good morning. Radar contact. Now, in reality, I think we have to be mentioning like uh, on the uh, Bukal 1 uh, arrival sending to 4,000 feet but I think that's too complicated for the pilot to ATC all those words so I don't even try to speak too much about it crossing flight level 130 our transition level so we should switch to local QNH 1015 now let's go and have a look how far before we get to the airport? It says destination at uh, 2346. Right now it is 2334, so that's 12 minutes from now. So that should be more than enough time. We can turn on seat belts now. Everybody get back to your seats. Time to get busy. How's our FPS doing? 50 something. Very nice. Much smoother, especially because I'm using head tracking. And with head tracking, sudden movements, it's more obvious when you have a bit of lag. So when you're at 30 FPS, it can get pretty choppy. Okay, looking good. Let's keep that there. Go back to perf here. Five, 
something is getting near us uh, I should have switched this to below so that would focus on the planes below us that's how we see this guy and that's very practical because we are descending so we are more uh, we give more care to the planes below us where we are at risk more at risk of hitting than the ones above at least that's the general idea beautiful we are already in the region that is covered by the mega manila scenery if you guys want to download this for yourselves if you are filipinos or very much into philippine landscape i highly recommend it mega manila scenery by cloud surf simulations something like that name sorry uh, cloud surf asia simulations something along those lines okay clumsy 168 slow to 250 knots or less we'll go clumsy 168 looks like the plane is smart enough to do that yeah, it's leveling here at 10,000 until we reach 250 knots and then maybe it will start its descent again. Looks like. Any chance we can do any sort of plane spotting at the moment? Now, the frame rate is getting hammered now. We are at 25 FPS. That's because of all the details right there in front of us. All the buildings being rendered. That's just how it is. Okay, speed is good. The plane is smart enough for that. Below 10,000 feet, we... Turn on our landing lights. That one I'm actually not sure. What I've heard is below 10,000 you, you turn them on. But I guess it depends on where you're flying. Because some of the videos I've seen, they only turn on their landing lights when they're actually on final approach. When they're near landing. But from what I've heard, you enable them below 10,000 feet. Anyway, right. This one we should be seeing. He's there. You can see its shadow. Can you guys see? Oh, it's gone again. Dang it. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There it is. There's the plane. Cebu Pacific. <laughs> A sliver of it. Yeah, it only gets rendered uh, around 10 miles away. This guy is 7 miles away from us, so we should be seeing him. Let's have a look. Let's go and find him. Ah, look at that view. That's a thumbnail right there. Look at all those details below. There's the plane. Beautiful, right? Little bit of plane spotting. Not too shabby. Look at all that. All those buildings. The population density is real here in Manila. But this is home. Love it. Even though I've been living in Singapore for like, what, almost seven years now? I still consider Manila my home. That's more like it. The A321 should be much longer here. Have more doors for emergency exit and all that stuff. Beautiful. You can see the roads below, some cars. This is not very realistic though because there's no traffic. These, these roads should be filled with cars. <laughs> Airport should be almost right below us. Yes. Let's go again and look. Should be right below. There it is. Beautiful. Actually some planes taking out there. 
some planes taxiing. Oh, that is super cool. That beautiful. I know everyone's looking forward to Flight Sim 2020, but my goodness. That in itself is an amazing view. Also, I think I missed something. Good thing we're not too late for it. We have been cleared for the ILS approach already. So, uh, we should be able to set our altitude setting to 2500. thousand five hundred feet so that we can descend all the way as necessary winds are calm zero at two knots looks like a lot of other planes in the vicinity a lot of them landing too let's see if we can find any of them Any chance for plane spotting here? Nothing that close. There, there we go. Yeah. Someone's on final actually. Runway 24. Same guy as us. Just a bit ahead. And there's one more there. Oh, that is so cool. Traffic global for the win. Oh, I wonder if that's... Uh, hmm. Is that BGC? Trying to see if I recognize some of the real life places here in Manila. Everything looks so different from up above here. Beautiful. Beautifully busy. And now, speaking of busy, it's time to get busy. <clears throat> if you look here, there is that. Uh, is that a D? That would signal that we will be transitioning from descent to approach. I guess that marks the end of the descent phase. So that will switch us to the approach phase, where the speed will lower to 136. And uh, everything like so. I know, Clumsy not the most technical. UNH is 1015 at Ninoy Aquino International Contact Tower on 118.4. Enjoy your morning. QNH is 1015, tower on 118.4, clumsy 168, good morning. Clumsy 168, tower frequency is 118.4. Frequency is 118.4, clumsy 168. Aircraft calling approach, say again with your call Never mind. <laughs> Let's switch to tower here. Tower, clumsy 168, inbound for the ILS approach to runway 24. Clumsy 168, good morning. Radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 24 call when established on final. Continue ILS to runway 24. We'll call when established on final. Clumsy 168. At 2500, we. Deploy our landing gear. I want to show this though. Love this turn. Extend the landing gears. Beautiful. And set flaps one. Plane is turning perfectly as planned. And we just follow those markers. You can see that. Actually, below it already. Flaps 2. Those two orange lines. Flaps 3. And as we reach that one, full flaps like so. And then it will then try and reach that speed with the magenta line, which is, I believe, the V app approach speed 136. If I am understanding that correctly. And we should have in uh, landing scales that's the one I forgot there it is so that is the 
those are the ILS this is the localizer this is the glide slope and we've hit the approach button so that we follow that I just hit it in time perfectly <laughs> there we go we have captured the glide slope as uh, indicated by the annunciator so we can say tower clumsy 168 established on the ILS runway 24 They should give us clearance to land. Hopefully. Clumsy 168 with the lot and variable clear to land runway 24. Clear to land runway 24, clumsy 168. So you see those checklists again are here. Cabin, inform everybody. We are about to land. Spoilers are armed and we are good to go cabin ready flaps full everything is checked no more blue lines everything green now it's up to us and i should give a bit of disclaimer here <laughs> i am not very used to this plane yet traffic 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 someone is taking traffic traffic overtaking us from behind which should not be happening. There, that guy. It's very close to us. Traffic. Traffic. What we don't have yet is Traffic. auto brake. Traffic. Auto brake can be low. Traffic. Traffic. It's actually interesting Traffic. that that's not Traffic. part of the checklist. Traffic. 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 Now I think Traffic. we'll be hearing that uh, Traffic. annoying Traffic. Traffic. Traffic until the end. Traffic. 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 In reality, Traffic. that shouldn't happen. Traffic. Traffic. One side. Traffic. Looks like Traffic. he is. Traffic. Catching Traffic. up on us. Traffic. Traffic. One thousand. Traffic. Traffic. Let's uh, Traffic. get rid of the autopilot. Traffic. 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 Keep Traffic. this here. Traffic. Traffic. Now the throttle I'm not using. Traffic. I'm not Traffic. moving. Traffic. Traffic. Unlike in the seven three seven. Traffic. Traffic. Whoa. Traffic. Okay. Traffic. Yeah, that definitely shouldn't Traffic. be happening either. Traffic. 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 Traffic, traffic. Sorry for this, guys. Traffic, Very noisy, I know. Traffic, traffic, traffic. But yeah, the throttle I'm not moving at all. Not like in the. We are high. Oh, and suddenly the weather changed. And. There's someone taking off again. We're low. Flight slow. Told you I'm not used to this plane. Light oh slow. my goodness, that definitely should be happening. Light. Okay, we got this. 50, 40, 30, I'll take that. Reversers. Clumsy 168 exit runway when able. I'll take that. This plane requires a much more dramatic flare than the 737 which is something I like but something I'm not used to okay. there we have it beautiful reversers idle should have been idle a long time ago nice Turn off the landing lights. Where are we going? Through here, maybe. I have no clue. Clear of active, clumsy 168. Clumsy 168, welcome to Iowa Kino International Contact Ground on 121.35. Have a Look good that morning. That beauty there, all those Philippine Airlines planes there. Let's go and uh, come close to them. Normally, I should be switching to ground, but it just takes so long to move to the proper gate. So let's just do it our, on our own. Let's just set it up. Start the APU. 
We'll review later how we did on the landing. It's not the best landing, I think, but it shouldn't be that bad. I should have flared more. But we'll take it. That's why we are a first officer. Gives me room for improvement. Okay, that guy, that uh, gate looks like it's empty. Yeah, so unfortunately, there is not a huge synchronization yet with Pilot to ATC and Traffic Global. So you can see sometimes the runways being used are different. You'll have planes coming at you, so it's not perfect. But when it does work, it does feel very nice. There we go. Just line it up like here. It's like a very light plane. Very maneuverable. Let's take that. It should be okay, I think. Slow it down, though. And yes, as you can see, I don't have rudder pedals. I only have a button for braking. Stop. Right. There. Perfect. That's what I was referring to if you guys didn't notice it. We can rewind the video a bit. Parking brake is on. APU is available. That's good. So we can turn off the engines now. Perfect. And now the jetway is... Uh, attaching. Awesome. Oh man, this is perfect. Look at this, guys. It didn't seem like it, but if you look at the flight log... Look at that. 67 feet per minute. That is the smoothest one I've seen. I've had. Even compared with the 737, if you look at the logs here. The only double digit I have other than that... Oh no, I do have a negative 50. Less than 50 rather. But that's, I think, a, not really a, a, a true <laughs> proper landing. Okay, that looks good. That is looking pretty good. Let's have a watch at the replay. Oh, that's what everybody's waiting for, including me. Alright. Let's turn off the, the air traffic. Pilot to ATC, thank you. Let's go and see how we did. Let's go to external view. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. Can you also see those funky planes? That's the one at the back. Where are those which were taking off in front of us? <laughs> Goodness. Very unrealistic. But yeah. The, uh, if you want air traffic, We'll have to live with some of the funkiness there. What I find weird is there are some way who are landing on runway 24 and there are some who are taking off from runway 06 which is contradicting itself. I would expect that the AI traffic should coordinate with each other at least. So this shouldn't happen along with that. That guy and that guy sorry, shouldn't even be meeting. So weird. So, 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 so weird. Right. Let's fast forward here a bit. Came a bit low. But. Made up for it after a bit. Here we go. Throttles to idle. And flare. Oh, that was smooth. Or is even smoke there? I didn't know there was smoke. Beautiful. And reverse is on. I see that from here. And let's close this one for a more cinematic view. I can only imagine how this would look like with the A321. Smooth as silk. Not as even, but I'll take it. Goodness. Right in the center line as well. Almost. 
and almost at the touchdown down point. Touchdown zone. Beautiful. I'll take that. Ouch. Perfect. All right, guys, we will leave it there. Thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Really enjoying this one. Hopefully you enjoy it too. If you do, let me know in the comments so we can keep this series running. All right? And hit the thumbs up, like, comment, share, and all that stuff. Have a good day. Clumsy flying, everybody. Catch you in the next video. Thanks. And bye-bye.